good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We are happy that we're able to be here. And we're also happy that we can uh, stand before the church and read some scriptures. And uh, I feel like the, what we are wanting to read and all and talk about this morning is, uh, will be beneficial to you and, and give you a clear understanding of uh, of some of God's word, and we hope that we can be a blessing. We want to study some this morning in the book of John in the 14th chapter. And, uh, it, uh, it's a comforting, some comforting scriptures here this morning. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people this morning don't want to uh, think about uh, having troubles. We're in good shape, but there's so many people out there this morning that are are going to do things and let their children do things uh, that's an abomination in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. This morning, people, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a terrible time, and 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 the thing of it is, uh, they don't know what they're doing. Right. Uh, they've not been taught anything concerning this day of, that they. Uh, Called Easter, and mm -hmm. uh, they they have all of these plans for these children and, and uh, uh, for everything going on in the church, and uh, it's an abomination in the sight of God. You're right, uh, because, amen. Uh, we just don't we I, I mean they just don't know, and uh, uh, we've we've been trying to study some for the last day or two on this and uh, uh, this thing called Easter, and it's uh, it's a uh, it's something that developed thousands of years ago, and it's a thing that's, uh, uh, it's the devil's work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, that's our take on Easter this morning. It's, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not what the Lord would be pleased in doing. So You're this right. morning, if we want to talk about anything or, or, or think on anything, it would be the resurrection. Because we know the resurrection happened. Amen. We know this morning that he did it because uh, if he hadn't have done it, uh, there wouldn't have been no hope for none of us. Uh, I mean, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there wouldn't have been not, not a soul that could have went to heaven. Amen. Because he broke the chains. He broke the death. He broke death. Hell. He he broke hell. He made it possible for us through this resurrection. Uh, to be with him in heaven. So this morning, in this, I, I would refer you to chapter 14 of the book of John and I'll read these scriptures to you. Uh, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. And as I mentioned this morning, uh, there's so many people out there this morning that don't realize, but they should have a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. But they haven't got a troubled heart is because that they don't know what they're into. They don't know how what's going on in their life, and they think that everything is well with them, but uh, we know this morning that there is practices going on in churches this morning, and things that are, are of the devil, and it's not pleasing to the Lord, and uh, without without uh, someone reaching them, and I'm hoping this morning, and praying this morning, that what we're saying this morning will, will reach somebody uh, somewhere, and I believe it will, Amen. We're making an effort this morning to try to send the word out to the world and maybe, or I'm sure that somewhere, as the sower went out to sow seed, some of it fell on good ground. Right. And so this morning, this is what my, my desire and my hope is that I can, that I can put out some seed this morning. I can sow some of God's word out this morning that will, will, will help people to understand their condition. So he says, let not your hearts be troubled. And this morning, as I mentioned this morning, we don't need to have a troubled heart. We have no reason to have a troubled heart. Amen. We that know the truth, we that know the Lord Jesus Christ, we have no reason to have, to have any troubles because it's all in, in his hands. 
and he can take care of the situation and all we have to do is just obey him and, and do his will. And so he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And now we know that Jesus came during the Old Testament time and, the, and under the law and they believed in God. Uh, Abraham and all of them believed in God and, and, and it was passed on and they believed in God. But he says here, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. And Jesus Christ was sent to this world as uh, our Savior. And this morning, if we ever, if we ever want to understand it and accept it and to uh, believe it, it's, the, it's time to do it because, listen, uh, we're not promised of tomorrow. And if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, and, of course, I know this morning that, that you, can't, uh, you can't go anywhere and say, well, I want to I accept Jesus as my Savior, and, and then you're good because they're teaching it out there. Uh -huh. They're leading a world. They're leading a world story. It don't happen that way. But the, the thing of it is, you have to have a heart within you that's seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will come into you and, and come to you and and talk to you about this. But listen, it's got to be something on your part too that you need to you need to have a desire this morning to turn from your wicked ways and go uh, and, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And so He says here. He says, if you believe in God, and, and of course they believed that God, and they believed also that God was going to send a Messiah, but they didn't know when they saw him who he was. But anyway, he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. And he says here, if it were not so, I would have told you. And people this morning other things that he brings out in the scriptures here if it were not so he wouldn't have had it wrote down and we this morning need to accept the fact that god's word is true everything that is wrote down here is for you and for me and for leading us and guiding us to, in the way that we should live and a closer walk with the lord that's god that's the purpose of god's word this morning is to for it's our it's our it's our, our guideline. It's what we have to do in order to stay in the will of God. We, we, need, to, we need to study this word more than we ever have in our Amen. life. Because, listen, people, <laughs> the, the world is getting so, it's getting so, it's getting so uh, wicked. Amen. People are getting killed by the thousands this day and time. And, uh, listen, it's, it's, it's getting close to the time when that, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ... Uh, is, is going to be calling us out. Amen. And so we need to be ready. And so this morning, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. But he says also that there is a place already prepared as a, a mansion for you. And he says here, if I, if I, if it were not so, I would have told you, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now the mansions are fine. But he says, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. And so it's going to be something better than a mansion. You're going to be in the presence of Jesus Christ, Amen. God the Savior. And you're going to be there with a, 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 a saved spirit and a glorified body together. Just like Jesus Christ was when he walked upon this earth. You're going to be there in the presence of God and in, in the, in the, in the Holy Christ. And you're going to be there forever. And he says, and if I go. Notice here, he says, and if I go. Well, people, we know this morning that Jesus' word is true. And he said, I go to prepare a place. Then he said, if I go. Well, there's no, there's no reason to doubt that Jesus Christ did not come to this earth and live 33 years, the third years. And he walked in, in this earth and he, he lived a perfect life. Amen. And he died. And he was buried and he was resurrected. There's no reason to doubt that because he did it. And if people don't want to believe the scripture, there's there's history for mankind that wants to know everything that happened. And but it's true that he did this for us. And he said, and if I go, and which he will, and prepare a place for you, here's the thing: I will come again. 
Amen. And this morning, we, we know this morning he's coming again because he said when when he left and, 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 and as they were standing and watching him ascend up, the angels there that was dressed there, and why said, uh, why stand you here looking up and gazing up into the heavens? In like manner that you see him leave, he's going to come again also. And people, he's going to come, he's going to come, and he's going to uh, ex uh, rapture us out. So he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. This morning, people, this is uh, this is the most precious thing in this Amen. world that he, that we're going to be with him. And he says here, if I and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And here, after he has said this, Thomas, and of course we know that Thomas uh, doubted Jesus Christ, uh, and and he he's. He was just, he was fleshy like everybody else. We, we all have the same problem. But Thomas here uh, said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. Well, Jesus had already told him time and time again whether he was going. He was going back to the Father. And he says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Amen. And it's so simple this morning, and people, you say something to them about Jesus as the way, and they they cannot understand it because, listen, they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as right. their Savior, and it's 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 not it's it's just words that comes in their ears and goes out their ears. But listen, they have to have this this thing of salvation in order to understand that Jesus Christ is the way. And this morning, if we ever, if we ever, ever try to be a blessing to someone, this is some of the things that we need to tell them that Jesus Christ is the way. And he says that, he says, I'm also the truth and the life and no man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me. Amen. So that eliminates your church membership, your baptism, that eliminates anybody praying for you, praying you out of purgatory, out of hell. That eliminates all of that because he, we already said that God's word is true. And he says here, he says, no man come to the Father. If, uh, let me read it again. Please let me help you say, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he's saying no man can stand before God except Jesus Christ uh, is their Savior. And we know this morning that that's, this is going to happen. That's a judgment. So no man can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Now, he says, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Amen. So here, here, here we see that 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 he, Jesus is saying, uh, not only me, but my Father also is important to you. And he says, and, and, and henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So now this confused, I'm sure, the people when they said, if, if, you, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father also. And, they, they don't, they, and so here Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Yeah. And it suffices us, or it will satisfy us. But Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, we are the same. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and God are the same in that they are, they are both in one accord, and they are both, the, they're, they're, they're both they think alike and everything. And uh, he said, he told Philip, he said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen my father also. And so here is very, it's very, uh, it could be very confusing, but listen, it's plain, it's plain if you understand how, how Jesus Christ was and how that he, his father is. And, and Jesus said to him, have I been so long time with you and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? 
He that has seen me has seen my seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Why would you say that, Philip? Because you should have understood that I and the Father are the same, are in one. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. For because the Father hath already told Jesus what to say and what to do in everything that he done and everything he did. And he said in one place there, he said, he, as he was praying there before his crucifixion, he said, Father, I have done, I have done what you have told me to do. I have, I have kept everything that you give me. I have done everything that you've done, for, said for me. And so he said here uh, that, uh, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. In Amen. other words, what I'm doing here on earth, how I am healing, how I am touching things uh, or healing people and, and, and telling you about the Father, you can believe it for the work's sake. Because he says, I walked here sinless upon the earth. I have not sinned. I have not served sin in any way. Uh, and, and he said, for that work's sake. And listen, this morning, it's a good it's a good thing for you to think about on this. The life that Jesus Christ did and lived, you need to look at that and you need to believe that because listen, with that will it will strengthen your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Amen. he lived a perfect life upon this earth. And we need to look ahead and believe it and read his word and how that he did all of these things even when he was tried and tempted of Satan, even when he hung on the cross of Calvary and died and he said, forgive them, uh, 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 Father, and, and all of that. Listen, he was perfect and his life was perfect upon this earth. Amen. And, and we need to, we need to look at that and through that, through that life, we can, our faith can be much, much stronger. And we can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ more because our faith is very weak. Because, listen, we just do not see the things happening now that we did in Jesus' time. And so our faith is weak. Mm -hmm. we, we believe in Jesus Christ. But a lot of the times, it's, it's not from the heart. A lot of the time, we just accept it as, uh, like I said, a while ago, out of a history book. But listen, people, it's it's the it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ walked upon this earth and kept every jot and every tittle of the law. He Amen. None, and so His perfect life, we should be able to attach to that, and our strength should be stronger because He did it and. And he's our, he's our Savior, and we should be able to uh, live closer to the Lord what we do a lot of times. So here he said again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, in verse 12, The works that I do shall he do, here we go, also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So he's saying this morning, He's saying this morning when he left this world, he sent the Holy Spirit. And when we can do greater works than what had been done because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit speaking to our souls and our, our heart this morning, we can be encouraged through the Holy Spirit and that we can have a, a greater desire to serve the Lord Jesus Christ than it did before he left this earth. So right. notice, verily I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And he's going, when he said, when I go to my Father, I'll send you a comforter. And that comforter will come and be with you and live within you, and he will he will speak to your your heart, your soul, and he will encourage you and he will comfort you and you can know in a greater way when the Holy Spirit comes in how 
great a work I did, and you can do great works too, and greater works can happen. So here, this is all through faith. Now, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And Amen. this morning, people, when we come to pray, we don't need to mummer and jibber around like, like that. But listen, we need to be sincere with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to ask the Father. He'll present the prayer to the Father. And, and he'll give us those things that we that we need and that we ask for. And a lot of, the, uh, of our desire should be to how that we can serve him in a greater way than what we do and be a better, uh, more of a, 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 sh a show to the world and stand for Jesus Christ and let Amen. people know what we stand for and, 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 and tell people about Jesus Christ. And so he says here, he says that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So here in verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And, and, and there, there's nothing this morning, huh, there's nothing this morning, I believe with all my soul, there's nothing this morning that you can do if you cause the Father to be glorified in the Son. That's, that's the preciousest thing in this world to, to God the Father. He, he loved His Son. And he, he sent him to this world to die for you. And if you can do anything that will glorify the, Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, you're pleasing the Father. Mm -hmm. And listen, that is that is our that should be our uh, our greatest desire this morning is to is to please the Father. Now, in verse uh, fifteen, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And Amen. so, people, he's not going to come for a little while and be gone. With but listen, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells with us. I, I can't, I, that's one thing that I'm assured of this morning is that the Holy Spirit comes in and he speaks to our hearts, our souls, our spirits, and he tells us and he, he comforts us and he tells us when we do things that we shouldn't do. And he, he tells us, hey, you don't need to do that. You, you don't need to say that. You don't need to think that. You don't need to uh, wonder about that. And I believe he's, he's always present with us. And uh, a lot of people think, well, maybe he, he comes in a little bit and that, but listen, I think he's there. Because mm -hmm. listen, he says here, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Amen. Now, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So people this morning, you ought to, we, ought to be, we ought to be happy this morning. Though we that are, have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and he's called us unto him. Listen, he sent the Holy Ghost here, uh, the, the Holy Spirit to dwell with us and to comfort us. Amen. To help us in our daily lives. Now, this again... This, this Holy Spirit will identify with these old false, false doctrines and false practices and false works and things that the world is doing this morning as a pretense for religion. It will, it will, identify, it will identify them. And listen, this Holy Spirit will bear witness, my spirit with your spirit, your right. spirit with my spirit. It'll bear witness. I know, I know what I'm talking about because I, I felt it. I've seen it. I know it happens. And he says here, uh, uh, in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Amen. But ye see me because I live; ye shall live also. And so we have life eternal, and we can see 
Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit this morning, and we can, we can, our spirit can bear witness with his spirit, and, and the Holy Spirit will comfort us. And he says here in verse 20, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. People, that's just as plain as the nose on your face. Though the, the, people say, oh, you don't have to keep those little commandments. But listen, I'm going to tell you what. God made rules. God made a, a things that he would have us to do. And, and he calls a lot of them over not to commit murder, not to steal, not to lie, and not to use his name in vain. Things like that. Listen, these are some of the things, and there's many more. And these things, he says here, uh, he that keepeth my commandments and keepeth them, and he is that loves me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself unto him. And so, uh, this manifesting himself to us this morning is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks to our souls, and, and he manifests what he would have God, he reveals what God would have us to understand and know. And he is our, he is our, our, receiver from from heaven and he he relates it to us this morning judah saith unto him not esker lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him amen so this morning, not only does the Holy Spirit uh, come and dwell, but listen, he brings the presence of the, of the Lord Jesus with him and, and God, and they, they communicate with us. They communicate with us. And, and, and I know this morning when we get close to the Lord and we're praying and asking uh, his leadership, listen, there's, there's some, sometimes there's a specialist, the special, that special presence there of people, and I know it's the Holy Spirit coming in and, and, the, and the Father and the Lord bearing witness, and he's bearing witness with them and, and speaking Man. to our souls. And so uh, it's, it's the best time in the world. It is. Now, <clears throat> uh, in verse 24, He that loveth me not, Keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine. Let's see. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, there's the Holy Ghost again, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. And so, people, we have the Holy Spirit here. And when that little boy starts, when that little boy starts talking to you, you better listen. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you don't know it's the Holy Spirit, you need to uh, try to find out. And... I would suggest prayer. Uh, pray to the Father and ask Him what's going on. And listen, if that voice, if if that voice tries to tell you something wrong, you better believe it's not of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and I'm going to tell you what: Satan is still much alive, and he's on the prowl, and he'll try to convince you that hell is an ice house if you'll listen to it. Now, here we say again in verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Neither let it be afraid. There's no reason. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Now there's a, there, here is the, here is this, 
He says, first of all, if you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go to my father. Well, he's going to be glad to get back to heaven. That's where he was, and he's going to get, be glad to get back. For my father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. In other words, when he was, when he was crucified. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world, the devil, cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. Amen. And as the Father gave me commandments, even so, I do. And so he, the, the, he said, Jesus said, that God commanded me to do these things, to say these things, to tell you these things, and he said, I've done it. And he says, Arise and let us go hence. And so this is the end of the, the uh, reading this morning, and I hope that uh, some of the things that we've read will, will uh, find a lodging place in your heart, and uh, that you can maybe pass it on to others when you have the opportunity, because the Lord, uh, the Lord sent the Holy Spirit, and He's dwelling in you, and uh, probably the day will not pass until you have an opportunity to be a witness in some way to someone. Sometimes you may not know it, sometimes you may know it, but the thing of it is, people are watching you. People know uh, a, lot of, a lot of your friends don't know where you're at this morning, and they know that you're at church, and they'll, they'll be watching you, and uh, you, just, you just keep on keeping on, and, uh, and, and being a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all. Amen.